Well, here we are again. This time we're messing around with the AVO rear shock for the kit car. And uh, this is a stock shock. There's about 25,000 miles on it. And let's see, six years. And uh, Southern California doesn't get too dirty, so road grime is pretty minimal. So it's in pretty good shape. But uh, I believe it was the misalignment of the car itself, uh, which you saw in a previous video, which caused the seal to wear out. And I have learned that uh, from the internet, you cannot buy a rebuild kit. Uh, you have to send the shock to AVO in England, um, which is not very practical for me in the United States. So I decided to take it apart and uh, see what's going on in there. Um, I didn't like my options, so I figured, well, it doesn't hurt to take it apart, and I can always just put it back together. But anyway, I found uh, some very dirty oil inside, very, very dirty oil. I cannot stress that enough. And the actual leak is caused by this part here. And um, I don't know if you can see, it's very specialized little rubber o-ring and then this rides right next to it and this is steel and it's rusting and I don't like that because uh, rust will float around inside your oil and it's just not good for parts right um, so I got this mostly clean and I'm gonna finish cleaning it putting it back together since I can't get a rebuild kit I did the next best thing and I tried these two parts here this is all goes assembled in this order. <laughs> okay, there's your top. Moving on down, a little bumper. This is a little um, cap, kind of. Screws on the top of the cylinder. Sealing, this is the old seal, which I can't get, it leaks. And this is the new seal that I made. So, I can't machine rubber like that. So I machined a housing out of stainless steel that is uh, very precisely machined. And these two O-rings fit inside it pretty snugly, which, uh, which are going to fit over this plunger pretty snug, right? That's going to prevent the leaking. And then I need the assistance of this flat washer here um, to seal this device in this cap. Okay, so between this metal to metal, I have to have a seal. So this all goes together like that. There's a little snug of a fit, but there. Okay, and this is gets pushed by the spring like there. Let's see if we can get a better view here not so good to view okay and uh, um, but with the old one since this is rubber inside outside around both ends everything's rubber um, it took me four pieces to do the job of these two pieces but the good part is that these are very common you can buy them replace them quite easily about 10 cents each and same with this flat washer is um, maybe 10 cents for this flat rubber washer now my experience with flat rubber washers is they will go bad after a while they'll crack um, but because it's so darn cheap 10 cents and this is a relatively easy shock to disassemble uh, I don't claim to understand everything about it I haven't really taken the time to study it but on the lower end we have a standoff tube which feeds down into a metering mechanism your dampener Okay, and like I said, it's all in pretty good shape, other than it was really filthy dirty. This was inside the tube. This is a sealed airbag, which I presume limits the volume of your oil. I think that's its purpose. So different models have different volumes of oil, different volumes of air in this little bag. Yeah. And we have this uh, cylinder, which fits in there. It has a valve in the end. It's a one-way check valve. And I'm not sure exactly its purpose. And then uh, this piston here has little piston rings on it. Slides inside there. 
Uh, the plunger, this rod part here, I'll call it a plunger, is the movable part, obviously. And this is the stationary part. The stationary part fits into the top of this housing. There's a little groove, a little seat, and it just goes down so far and it seats in there. And then you see some threads at the very end. That's this cap here, threads in there. And um, so we just, it has to have a way to seal that, keep that oil in there. Uh, we have a little bumper pad or you know, bumper at the top, which is a little chewed up, but still plenty good enough to use. And a little keeper for the spring at the top end, which, um, yeah. And then, of course, this will fit over your spring like that. And the spring, to keep it compressed or compress it, you can use wire. You can put it in a press. Uh, normally what I do is I compress shocks in a press, wire them to keep them compressed, and then take the press off, and then the wire holds it compressed, and I can disassemble things. Um, but I got tired of doing that, so this time I went out and I bought the little correct tool for it, although this tool here is for a larger spring, so it barely fits on. I had to modify it a little bit, but that is the correct tool to uh, compress a coil spring. Uh, I think it was made for like cars and this is just a little bit too small. So uh, that's kind of it. Um, this is a sheet metal pressed into this funny shape. It has a little lip to keep the spring centered. And so I have the exact same lip on my housing there. And uh, Machining uh, took some time because of the precision and mostly the groove on the inside for the uh, two O-rings there was quite um, very, you know, if you're a couple thousands off, you just scrap the part. So it has to be very precise. You can barely see it. You can see the little ridges on the inside shining. Um, and this is stainless steel, so this should last the life of the shock. I expect something will rust out or something before this gives way. And if it works good, maybe I'll modify the other two front shocks. This is the rear shock. The rear shock I'm reasonably happy with. Um, so I don't really have any plans to replace it. It works okay. But the front shocks, I think there's room for improvement, um, but I can't get that improvement out of the AVO shock, so I'd have to go with some other brand, something more expensive, uh, hopefully something more common in the United States. I try not to uh, get parts from overseas. It tends to be cheaper that way. And um, as far as this shock, I would give it a grade of a B, I guess, in, in its design. Um, it's good, it's simplistic, it's okay. There's not, you know, I wouldn't give it a lot of praise, but I wouldn't say it's bad. It's okay. And my baseline of what I'm judging with is, is my Olean's shocks on this motorcycle. These are racing Olean's shocks. And uh, <clears throat> once you take them apart and look inside, and I've rebuilt these, um, is that you'll understand why they're so expensive. These are really top-of-the-line shocks. So uh, this is like the I call the Rolls-Royce of suspensions. <laughs> it is just a pleasure and everything's adjustable and everything is just, it's amazing. Um, the precision and, you know, inside these shocks is just amazing. So um, these, on, on the other hand, are just they work just fine. They're just not complicated. They're not real precision racing. They're fine for road, I think. But if I were to race, I certainly wouldn't choose this shock. But I'm not a racer, so that's fine with me. Okay. Have a good evening. Bye.